in total. And there are many events like that, many observations, many measurements, not made not only at Douglas Lake, but made around the world using uh, weather balloons, fixed weather stations, uh, satellite measurements of both the lower atmosphere and the stratosphere. All of them are starting to present a consistent story of a warming planet. Uh, in fact, the fourth intergovernmental panel on climate change assessment report was released in, in January through April, three different components of that report. And that process, the IPCC process, is actually a very scientifically conservative process. They look at evidence. The first IPCC report in 1990 said, you know, there is a little bit of change, but we don't know what, what's driving it. Since then, there have been more and more studies. The second uh, IPCC assessment had stronger evidence for trace gases, CO2, methane, nitrous oxide, chlorofluorocarbons, warming the atmosphere. The third IPCC uh, assessment in 99 said the Earth is warming, trace gases are getting more abundant, that is greenhouse gases, and humans are the main cause probably. The fourth IPCC assessment, which looked at thousands of peer-reviewed journals, uh, articles, across all kinds of disciplines, basically said humans are, more, are extremely likely to be affecting the planet. And moreover, they evaluated models that were constructed for the second and third IPCC assessment and found that the model predictions for a warmer planet actually underestimated the measured warming that occurred after the models generated their predictions. So it's been very, very conservative and the, the evidence is very compelling. Well, let's look at the human footprint. We call our footprint. Um, I know uh, a lot of you have seen this before, but how many people have seen this kind of a graph, this sawtooth graph? Good. Over half. How many people um, read the Dow Jones up and down? at least once a week. <laughs> Only about the same number of people. You must have really good retirement. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, we started looking at this when I was a graduate student right about here. I'll, I'll tell you what it is first. So this is the uh, CO2, the average monthly average carbon dioxide concentration measured at the top of Mauna Loa in the Pacific in Hawaii. Researchers went to the top of Mauna Loa looking for the cleanest air on the planet because they wanted to start measuring clean air and didn't know what they were going to find. But in 1958, when they started measuring it, the first thing they saw was uh, CO2 concentration increasing in November, January, December, uh, February, and then decreasing uh, in the springtime. And after they measured that for about 10 years in a row, there was a pretty clear pattern. I'm going to ask somebody a question here all of you, why would the CO2 concentration in Mauna Loa increase in the winter time and decrease in the summer? Pardon? What, Harry? Plants. Plants. Plants photosynthesize and they pull CO2 out of the atmosphere. And, and because there is a large land mass in the northern hemisphere, and because Mauna Loa is in the northern hemisphere, even though it's warm, and because the land mass is actually much more active on a per acre basis, the, the land plants actually control the annual cycling of CO2. Uh, so every, every winter the CO2 goes up and every summer the plants pull it down. Goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. But on average, every year since 1958, the CO2 concentration has gone up by about one and a half parts per million. Actually, the rate of increase is increasing faster now than it ever was. Can you hear me in the back? I really want, okay increasing faster than ever before. So this is what we now know is the human footprint because the, the mismatch between the uptake and the release is the result of fossil fuel burning. We're taking old carbon that was pulled into the soil and the rocks during the Permian, during the Pennsylvania, excuse me, Carboniferous era and buried, and we are re-releasing it to the atmosphere. And that, this is unequivocal human signal. If you look at the isotopes in the carbon dioxide 
there's less and less radioactive carbon because all of that fossil fuel carbon is not radioactive. Whereas atmospheric CO2 has a radioactive carbon 14. So there is no one who disputes that these measurements are accurate and that human beings are causing the CO2 to <coughs> Notice that it's measured in parts per million. It's not a lot of gas. Next. So, so what happens if we look way back in history? Um, and um, this looks back almost a half a million years. This is the CO2 record uh, in the Vostok ice core from Antarctica going back a half a million years. We can age this ice and we can look at the CO2 concentration. The highest it was before 1900, or let's say the, the U.S. Civil War, 1860, was about 270, 280 parts per million. Is there a pattern here? Is there a pattern? There is a pattern. Is it the same as the pattern in the previous slide? No. It, goes up. It, it does go up, but it also goes down and it wobbles around. I'm going to partially explain this pattern. Uh, we lived in, a, in an era called the Pleistocene, where every 100,000, we basically have a 100,000 years cycle. About 80,000 years, ice covers Michigan. And then 12,000 years ago, we, we began the last interglacial. Uh, and here we are, we're halfway through an interglacial. So we've had 10, 12,000 years of warm weather. We'll have another 10,000, 12,000 uh, 12, years of warm weather before the next ice sheet comes. But we can't predict that far in the future. Um, but these are the interglacials. And notice that the CO2 concentration is always highest in the interglacials when the Earth is warm. Now, I don't want to talk about cause and effect here. Um, because the primary cause of this is really the procession of the Earth and the distance it is from the Sun and the tilt that it has. So I wouldn't argue that this higher CO2 is necessarily causing warm interglacials. Nevertheless, there is a correlation between carbon dioxide and glaciers here, or no glaciers. No glaciers? Glaciers. So, I'm going to superimpose that last graph we saw, the Mauna Loa curve. Right now, I'm going to draw that line. There it is. That is the human footprint. That's the graph we just saw. So that starts, you know, in 1952 or 54. And that's the line drawn on the same geologic scale. We have never seen CO2 concentrations this high. And we're projected to see CO2 concentrations going up anywhere from 500 <laughs> to close to 1,000 parts per million, depending on how we decide to manage the planet. Next. This is, this is basically an offset of the graph we just looked at. So there is no question that we are affecting the chemistry of the Earth. <coughs> the CO2, um, basically it's a three molecule gas, carbon and, and two oxygens. And it has a property which oxygen, which neither oxygen or, nor L nitrogen has, and that is, Oxygen O2 and nitrogen N2 are uh, transparent to heat energy. They let infrared heat energy hit the planet and they let it reflect and go off into space. Carbon dioxide is a bigger molecule and it, it, it's a closer match to infrared wavelengths and it re-radiates infrared back to Earth. Satellite measurements show that the upper atmosphere, <laughs> the stratosphere, is getting colder while the lower atmosphere is getting warmer. And that's because of the reflection from uh, increased CO2. 